I want to show you my method for shortening and splicing CV shaft axles back together so that they will never break. And disclaimer, I'm not a materials engineer or mechanical engineer, but if you stay till the end of this video, I think you'll agree there's no better method. The CV axles for my project are 3.5 inches too long. That's a whole nother story as to why. But rather than spend a lot, like hundreds or even thousands of dollars on custom axle shafts, which may or may not even work. Made completely custom for my application by the drive shaft shop. All right, someone messed up. These two hubs, which are otherwise identical, have two different size stud holes. What I'm doing is I'm cutting out the excess and then welding them back together. But I'm not just gonna be butting up the two metal shafts together and welding around the perimeter. I have a better idea. Here is my design. I'll explain why it's shaped like this just in one second, but first let's review how we got to this point. While I'm not classically trained in machining or welding, it seems to me that the traditional method of joining two shafts together is to butt them up with a generous bevel on both sides so you can get multiple passes with the welder. So you get a, a root pass and then a couple of filler passes. And it, that's the advice I got from online, you know, from the welding subreddit, for example. But unless you're doing a proper preheat and postheat treatments and using a massive TIG welder machine, with a structural welding filler rod, uh, I don't think it would be very strong. If I was to try to do this with my little MIG welder, uh, -uh it would break so fast. A crack would form through the weld, and now your, my axle shaft would be in two pieces. So clearly the butt joint method can be improved by just simply, you know, say, fill it in here with some weld and then add a sleeve and then weld that in and that will help hold it together and this is what i think is probably the most common method for you know garage hobbyists like me who just need to uh, weld their shafts together um, but us humans we're always looking to improve and people started shaping the sleeves in interesting ways even to get more surface area you know i've seen some that are like that shape or even you know like this but then somebody thought to cut the shafts at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna draw it with an air gap, but in practice you wouldn't do that. Now, you know, it wants to spin. So as this shaft spins that way, this other shaft has to spin with it too. This is a really good design and I bet that 99% of the time this would hold up. You know, of course you would have a sleeve again, holding it all together. Because without that sleeve, it would quickly come apart because equal to the rotational forces this 45 degree angle is causing it to also want to push away from each other and so if the welds holding the uh, sleeve in place if that was to suddenly crack it could all come apart now would it suddenly crack I don't know but what I'm saying is it can be improved upon the next and until now final iteration that I'm aware of, so instead of cut the shafts at a 45 degree angle, cut them with a lap joint like this. And now you still have the ability for the shaft that's connected to the rotor to actually exert force on the shaft that's connected to the wheel and without there being any forces like this. So again, that's a really good design, but there is a flaw that I've identified in this design, and that is these inside corners right here and right here. This is a natural spot for cracks to want to form because all the stresses are focused at that one point there. And so now we've come to my design, and that is simply the same sort of lap joint, but with rounded inside corners. This will evenly distribute the stresses and there shouldn't, so cracks should not form. And of course, like all of the designs, there is a sleeve holding it all together. And admittedly, I'm probably being a little too uh, cocky, especially for someone who has no professional experience in any of this. But at least it's better than what those men in flip-flops are doing on TikTok. And I also got a vote of confidence from Tinkering Guy. Yes, that Tinkering Guy. So I'm fairly certain that this is the best way to join the axle shafts. At least it is for me. 
And of course, I may be overlooking something. I do know that one way spliced axles can fail is from the heat affected zone changing the properties of the metal. Basically, the heat from the welder removes the hardness in the steel. You have a soft spot in the shaft, and obviously that is a weak point where it will shear. So to avoid that, I will cut my sleeves at a roughly 45 degree angle. And now it's going to kind of somewhat distribute that heat affected zone along the shaft instead of just that one point. In theory, at least, that should help out, I think. Okay, enough with the jibber jabber. Let's get to work. So I have this one finished already, but I have the other one to do. So I'll do that now, and then we can weld them up. For shaping the rounded inside corners, a flap disc just wasn't working for me. The cutting wheel could work, but you got to be careful because it tends to want to cut. At some point though, you're going to have to get out the BFG, the big fucking grinder. If you're handy with a mill, this would be a nice opportunity to use it. Although, the axle's hardness may give you some trouble. Thankfully for me, I don't have to worry about that as I don't own a mill. My methods are a little more brute force. Basically, I think as good as it gets with the tools that I have. This is a pretty good fit. The most critical thing to keep in mind here is the diameter of this section right here um, with the overlap. This needs to be the exact same diameter as the rest of the shaft so that when you put the sleeve over it, it totally locks it into place. And now, you know, it, even without welding it, it wants to stay together. It's going to be a strong joint, just naturally. All right, fellas, let's talk about the sleeves now. I worked out that if I could find a pipe that was, or a tube, I should say, that was one and three-eighths inch outer diameter and was uh, one-eighth inch in wall thickness, then that would give me just slightly larger inner diameter than what I needed because it's always better to be a little bit too big than a little bit too small right guys and then it occurred to me that I could just get um, a pipe that's a little bit too big cut it lengthwise cut it lengthwise this way and then press it into the diameter that I need okay now I'm gonna try and cut these at a 45 degree angle to distribute the heat affected zone so it's not all in one spot one perimeter around the shaft and for that, I'm going to have to get the BFG back out. Okay, I took out a half inch section and now I can use my new toy to press it into the diameter I need. This is a one and a half ton armor press that my buddy and coworker gave to me. So thank you, Max. And I'll also use um, the scrap bit of the axle here, the axle shaft as a guide.
Okay, I have it about as good as I think I can get it. So just one more to go, and then finally I can start welding. Okay, I have the two pieces of the axle shaft all jigged up here. I'm using some aluminum angle iron. I found that this was much straighter when I was shopping for it than the steel version. And so here I'm just using some pipe clamps and an extra vice grip here. Carefully made sure everything is aligned as I could make it. Now let's weld it up. Okay, let's see how I did now. I'm a little bit nervous because I had to use uh, 78, excuse me, I had to use 7018 rod instead of the 7014 that I was used to. Um, but the reason I couldn't use the 714 rod is because it was giving me a lot of cracks. Right away there was cracks in the welds on the test piece that I did. Glad I used the test piece first. So let's, uh, let's see how I did now. Okay, pretty damn good. To be honest, I'm a little bit shocked at how straight this turned out. This turned out really good. And I was going to get out the dial gauge here. You know, I didn't just buy this or anything, no. Um, and throw it up on this enormous arbor press here. And work out, you know, any fraction of a millimeter. But I don't think... I need to, and even if I did, I don't think I could. Like, you know, I can try, but it's not gonna change. This thing is bomb proof. Okay, let's put the sleeve on now, and this is gonna go on really tight. There. By the way, guys, yes, I'm using my stick welder, but only because my MIG welder is not big enough. If I had a 240 volt MIG welder, I'd be using that. Like. Uh, yes, a 240-volt stick welder will penetrate deeper than a 240-volt MIG welder, but the way this is designed, a MIG should be fine. The more you know. And just like that guys, I have some bomb proof CV axles that are three and a half inch shorter than stock. And no, you can't just go to a catalog and order CV axles for a Nissan Leaf that are three and a half inches shorter. The only other option would be to go uh, get a custom shaft made. And like I said, that'd be 500 to a thousand dollars. And admittedly, this method is a lot more labor intense than just butting them up and welding it up and maybe that would have worked fine like I am NOT a welder and if uh, if I had like preheated it done a root pass and then a couple of cap passes or whatever the phrases that welders use it might have been fine but I know that this will work and I know that any viewers out there who want to try this too you can use just use a MIG welder this will work fine I chose to use a stick welder one more thing, regular viewers probably want to know when's the next episode for the EVO Speedwagon come and come out. I have the footage for that. I have to put the video together. So just in a few days, guys. So subscribe um, if you haven't already, if you want to see that. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time.